Okay, now, these are your ventricles. They are not solid. They are empty spaces that are filled with fluid. This model represents the fluid that would fill that empty space. So you get all the way into the center of this thing, where you can look at the middle of it, and you see what would appear as the foramen if this were a solid, but it's not a solid. This is an empty space that's filled with fluid. So that would be the foramen of Monroe, the, intervent the interventricular foramen, or whatever else you want to call it, but really, notice how all it is is it's where the intermediary mass pokes through. I see. That's all it is. It's the intermediary mass. Oh, we thought that one is the foramen. Nope. Not at all. That's just the connection from the left or the left lateral ventricle into the third ventricle. That's all that is. And it very well may have a name and probably does, but it's not one that you need to know or study. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so yeah, that's your foramen of Monroe, which is kind of covered by the tape on this side there. So that's your foramen of Monroe, but it's really not a hole. This around it is a hole. That in the middle is something, but it's not a hole. Where the, since you have this model, where's the olives? Oh, yes, this? absolutely. Um, let me put my brainstem back together. Hate it when my brainstem falls apart. Causes all sorts of health complications. Okay, and I'm going to put some more of the brain around it so that you have a better um, reference. overall reference. The and the mass. Huh? How about the foramen and the mass? The medial mass? Inter intermediate. intermediate mass? The same thing. Yeah. So, same thing as foramen Monroe? Mm. Well, Calling it a foramen is stupid. Monroe, I heard this was foramen Monroe right here. I thought I heard this was no. this No. Foramen of Monroe and the interventricular foramen are the same thing. All right. So here you can see these bumps on the sides. These are going to be your olives and your pyramids. I believe this one is the olive, and these ones in the front are the pyramids. Yeah. We don't need to know. Yeah. So you can't see them in a cross section at all. I see, they're a lot more lateral. And... While I have this, let me also show you the peduncles, since I talked about those. Uh, the peduncles here are what connect the but the brain stem to the, cere to the cerebellum. Oh, okay. So these are your cerebellar peduncles versus your cerebral peduncles, <coughs> which is the midbrain. Now you take this off and you can see this entire large root here that goes from the brain stem up into the cerebrum. That whole root there is the cerebral peduncle. And if you open it up, you can see that this part here identified as the midbrain, you, no, typically in your books and in your manuals, is actually part of that same structure. So that right there is what you see when you cut through the middle. So it looks a lot smaller on the half model because you don't see the large bulges on the sides. But it's the same. The cerebral peduncle and the midbrain are the same thing. And they're just the connection upwards and out into the hemispheres of the cerebrum. So peduncles are just connectors, but we're... we're exactly. Area meets another. Yeah, well, everything in the brain is either a connector or a relay station where it makes a decision. All right. That's all the brain is, is a complex of relay stations and connectors. So this one right here, this peduncle, is it called what again? Or on the other side, sorry. These are the cerebral peduncles, and these are the cerebellar peduncles. You also get another view of the corpora quadrigemini here, too. So you have your superior colliculi and your inferior colliculi. And that one is... The I don't pineal? think you have. Yeah, that's the pineal. pineal okay. mm -hmm. Which does your uh, day and night rhythms, right? Exactly. Melatonin is the hormone that it produces to regulate that. And you can also, s you can't really see the septum pellucidum in this model, but it would so sit right here. It's a mass that separates these two ventricles. Remember, these are empty space that are filled with right, fluid. Right here, right? So if they're not connected, then there is a mass between it. So think logically that it's not shown in the model, but there is a solid mass here. That's the septum pellucidum, which you can see on the model right here. So you cannot see the lateral ventricles on this model, 
but you can see the septum pellucidum. What's number seven, once again? This is the uh, optic chiasm. Yeah, that's the optic chiasm. This is the pituitary. Do, do, um, do we even need to know? I don't know that you need to know uh, number you seven. Know that. Right. You don't need to know that. That's just fine. Yeah. All right. Okay. And this is the fornix, which appears very small right here. It's this entire green structure. So you only see this small piece in a cross section. So the fornix actually six. So where's the corpus callosum on this? On this one right now. The corpus callosum? Mm -hmm. You can, but it's misleading. So it's almost like the fornix is. You know, obviously yeah. it's just there. It is. Yeah. So. This is the corpus callosum, yeah. but it's misleading because looking at this, it almost looks like it's just a connection from front to back. Really, it's a connection from side to side, and this is a piece out of it. If you look at these upper parts of the brain, you can see. The corpus callosum extends from this point inward, so this area is actually part of the corpus callosum. And when you put the brain together, you see how it lines up directly with it. So this whole area is the corpus callosum, and it goes deep into this entire tissue. All of this inside here is all white tissue that is ultimately part of the corpus callosum. It's huge. Oh, it's absolutely oh, huge. I thought this just a small piece, it's yeah. only a small piece right through the center. But then it comes yeah. out. Huh? Yeah, it's absolutely huge. But yeah, it looks like it's just this tiny little thing on this yeah. model, but this is only a small piece of it. Now this ridge on the bottom is where it comes off and you get the septum pellucidum. I gotcha. And that sits right between these ventricles, so it hints that it would be there. Which is but the full septum pellucidum is not shown in this model. Which is superior to the fornix, right? Yes, superior to directly the fornix. Superior, right? Directly superior. Which is the fornix is superior to the uh, the uh, the choroid plexus. Which I don't know if you can see choroid. Yeah, you kind of can. This red area here, you can kind of see the choroid plexus on this model. There is a choroid plexus in every ventricle. Is it called choroid plexus? It is. It is called a choroid plexus. Yeah. Different name. Because choroid just means it's vascular. That's all it means. And plexus means it's a region, an area, or a um, a complex, if you will. So it's a vascular complex, is what choroid plexus literally means. So is that surrounded by epidermis? They do show it in the third ventricle. It's this blue red body right here. Is that this? is the choroid plexus. What about the fourth ventricle? You can't see it in the fourth. Is they don't show it. Is that surrounded by the epidemal cells? or epi Epidymal cells or that just line the, the entire ventricle. So nothing really lines, it's just... Uh, just the... Uh, it's not a tissue line in the blood cells. Uh, no, it's it's epidermal tissue. So that it diffuse, the does it diffuse? Under, I mean, is it going through capillaries in up to the? Oh yes, absolutely. The, uh, the choroid plexus is the capillaries that we get the CSF from. So the, the red stuff is the choroid plexus. Yes, the red stuff is the choroid, and here you can actually see the choroid plexus of the fourth ventricle. For those who are curious. So you see the choroid plexus in the fourth ventricle there, you see the choroid plexus in the third ventricle, and you can see the choroid plexus in the lateral ventricles. And this would be the foramen, or the... Uh, the intermediary the mass. I hate calling it a foramen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it looks like a foramen on this model, which is probably why they called it that. And this is fornix, then? No, you can't see the fornix. Um, what, I mean, um, yeah. What is this thing? This pink area? That pink area is the choroid plexus. And then the non-pink area? That's all CSF. This entire structure is solid all right. CSF. Okay, I, I'm like, okay, is this going yeah. great? Okay. Yeah, so you have your lateral horns, right. you have your third ventricle, yeah. and you have your aqueduct, which looks really thick on this model. Uh -huh. It's not that thick. Mm -hmm. That's the and same thing as here, right? Yes, exactly. Or no, 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 not there. Here. That's the other ventricle yeah. down there. So, right? oh, and, and this is the fourth ventricle. Hmm. What? I can't. What the space really? Aqueduct. Yeah, that's it. Aqueduct. It's the aqueduct. And that one is called then. That one is the central canal. Central canal, yeah. 
And it goes so, down and yeah. comes up into no, yeah. uh, arachnoid space. Yes. Now, not shown on this model is a spike coming off the bottom here, and that would be the central canal. So it's not shown on this model, but this whole thing is the fourth ventricle, and the aqueduct connects the third to the fourth. So what kind of questions do you normally ask on that one? Um, identify this, identify that, identify this, identify that. There's not a whole lot you can ask on this model. It's more conceptual to help you understand the flow of CSF. And that could be part of the question. Yeah. Now, he could ask you about the choroid plexuses, but it's not common. I haven't seen a lot of questions like that. But he could. So anyway, you should know that those are the choroid plexuses anyway, because that'll help you understand that there's one in every ventricle. And the infundibulum, where is that located? The infundibulum is the connection between the hypothalamus and the pituitary. Know this very well. Hypothalamus, infundibulum, pituitary. Know that very so well. That'll continue. Yes. That'll continue to come up Infant in later lessons. Infundibulum. Fun. In fun. Infundibulum. It's always fun. Yep. It's always fun. <laughs> And it's the, fun, the pituitary. The now, the pituitary is also called the hypothesis. <laughs> so, the infundibulum is also sometimes called the hypophyseal portal. Portal? I was going to say aqueduct. <laughs> well, it's, the channel or something. it's actually a portal system where it shares a specific capillary bed from the hypothalamus to the okay, um, so pituitary. It is okay, so it is going yeah. from hypothalamus to At least on the front half, it is. On the back half, it's a neural connection. Hmm. You'll get very familiar with this guy when you study endocrine. So for now, just know this well. Um, hypothalamus, infundibulum, pituitary. Know that very well. The, the, the pedicles, pedicles, or on the back side? Here? Yeah, on the sides. Not really the back side, because the back side is the fourth ventricle, so but on the, on the sides. sides. And there's any specific, oh, God, I really tore that apart. Uh, um. <laughs> So, mm -hmm. so you're, you're this the one would be the, um, the olives? Nick? Yes. Oh yeah, I was just talking about the olives. That's your Yeah. These are the pyramids. There's one here and there's one here. Yeah, some guy's crazy teaching anatomy in your class, and I'm like, my class. Oh yeah. And I'm like, I don't know. The cerebral. Yeah, I was just talking about the cerebral pedicles. Cerebral pedicles. Cerebral pedicles. Cerebral pedicles. Cerebral 